What was interesting, I was uh, reviewing uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, King James uh, Bible with a reference uh, edition as part of the uh, uh, part of the back of the Bible, and it went into actually uh, proper names that had a proper name index. And you have to understand that's a very important word, and I'm not going to get into it at this video because we can go on and on on words, but we, we know that the word proper would mean correct, true, and uh, therefore valid. And when I was reviewing the index on proper names, of course, a proper name was a given name. So just as a proper noun would be like Mississippi is the proper noun or the proper name within that for river. River would be general or common. So your proper name and as a proper name is listed not even getting into a division between, say, surname and given name, there is a difference between the two, and you would have to understand a lot of research has gone into what a surname really is. And in society, it's only relating to what seems to be the jurisdiction of the world, what man seems to lust after, all attaches to that name, therefore property. Therefore, anything to do with money seems to track through that name and that's why when somebody registers into the system, it's done voluntarily to use that name. Because that name is the eminent domain who is ever in charge of it. So it would need not matter who controls that title. Because whoever does control the title controls the usage of that name. So it does not matter whether or not the monarchy or those uh, in ruling capacity have pledged that in security as some artifice uh, to an artificial banking world, it is their jurisdiction for that because it is their eminent domain. It belongs to Caesar. It is not something that's natural. And therefore, everything that is natural belongs to God in his creation. And therefore, a given name is an inalienable history of giving a name to a child or naming whatever it be uh, that is in front of us and man having this inalienable right from the beginning uh, given by God um, we know that it, it's not it's not in the battle of jurisdiction over the artificial world of man it has nothing to do with that no you would not be able to lean property with it in a sense uh, when you start crossing the line into the world of man mammon money gain wealth you're stepping into a world of treasures on earth and caesar controls that and the world is controlled by the power of satan and therefore that's his artificial world until god says otherwise the timing now is to understand how you're going to live within those two jurisdictions the one that is god's and the one that belongs to caesar it would make no sense to be using Caesar's property and then thinking you're going to stiff Caesar on his bill. So we do get numerous calls from people saying, how am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to do this? Well, in the reality, everything that they've been doing in that world is attached to a contract they've actually voluntarily signed on to. And so we could never give anybody any counsel to actually step into these contracts and then think later we're just going to discharge them or we're going to eliminate them uh, based on some magical process. Because if you're claiming something on that jurisdiction, then you must pay the tithe of the tax that belongs to that jurisdiction. And therefore, uh, you need not send us any email saying, how do I get rid of a contract that I signed on to? You've walked into a reality, into that fictional world, and therefore that contract stands. How are you going to operate without being involved in that? We're going to get into that in more clarity through more like terms of abandonment and exemption. But this is not going to sink into the mind of somebody who is on a secular journey. The secular journey will close out any reality of spirituality. There will be no faith required to enter a secular journey or a secular contract. It's just based on the reality of someone assuming a debt and someone who has to be paid for whatever you are using that belongs to someone else. 
And that's what we deal with under the word license and many other things. You're only being licensed to use something that belongs to someone else. And therefore, if you use someone else's property, it is only logical that you would have to pay for the use of that. God brings you freedom through the spiritual side of the property that is his, but he brings you into a curse of damnation, unfortunately, when you walk into the use of something that could possibly have some evil attachments to it. So therefore, be cautious on just talking off the top of your head on debt and monetary subjects. These things are very, very, very damning when you enter into them. And therefore, if you're planning on going down the spiritual journey, then you do not want to be down a path saying that someone has ripped me off on a, on a contractual.